Hi everyone. In today's video, let's see why we have to consider investing in US stock market and if you want, what are the ways to invest? Number one reason is diversification. Diversification simply means you are not staying invested in one type of asset class or one geography or one currency. You are trying to diversify or spread it across geographies, currencies and asset classes. It's kind of a hedging strategy. You can imagine seesaw. For example, if you want to start business, maybe you are asking your wife not to quit the job because that will give you stability at the volatile time, right? The same is true in case of constructing our portfolio. When you are spreading your investment across all type of asset classes, if one is giving poor return, there is always another portion which can give you better return. Remember, diversification will not completely eliminate risk. This is a risk management strategy. In 2022 alone, India's rupee had depreciated against US dollar by 10 to 11 percent. So if you had diversified your investment between India and US, somewhere you would have stood as a beneficiary of this, right? The second reason is stability. Historically, US market had been less volatile. They are scoring less in volatility when you are drawing the comparison between US market and other developing countries including India stock market. Now I know what you are thinking. When Indian economy is growing at the rate of 6.1% and US economy is moving at 1.3-1.4% rate, how it is possible? Definitely when you are considering economy, India is one of the fastest growing economy. But if you are considering the volatility in stock market, US market is less here. So when you are investing in US market as per the historical data available, your stable wealth creation chances are more here. US is one of the diverse markets in the world. The market capitalization of US stock market is 40 trillion US dollar. So this is the pool of investors money. This should give some sense of confidence and security to I and you investors that our money is going to be safe there. And also if you observe that is the home for giant biggest tech companies which had already led the internet revolution and the next leg of the revolution which is AI might come from there. In past six months alone, look at this chart. Nasdaq has given 31% return. I can't predict that the same kind of growth might happen in the next six months also. But when you are considering the pace of AI and the direction in which it is moving, definitely the biggest and the fastest growth even in terms of return might come from this market. So who knows? It might become the home for many future millionaires. Now that we have briefly considered why we have to consider investing in US stock market, let's see what are the ways available or how to invest. The first is setting up a trading account with a brokerage firm. It may be a domestic broker or international broker. In case of domestic broker, he is going to act as an intermediary or middleman to execute your transaction. There is one more important point to note here. RBI in 2004. It has come up with the scheme called LRS, Liberalized Remittance Scheme, where it monitors and allows resident individuals to make, you know, any kind of overseas investment and the total inflows and the outflows. So as per that, there is a limit up to which resident Indians can make investment that is $250,000 per one financial year. There is a cap. This is applicable. Now this is the cap which is applicable. In 2023 budget, government also had increased the TCS or tax collected source which is part of this LRS from 5 to 20%. That means whenever a resident Indian is also making foreign investment, buying foreign equity, this TCS of 20% is applicable even to him. So what does that mean? That means whenever you are executing transaction that is buying foreign equity, 20% of that amount is being withheld by the government. 
Now you can say it is my money. I want to take it. Yes, they will return only at the time of filing income tax return. Now the procedure is you file income tax return and they will adjust it against the tax payable by you. If at all TCS is more and the tax payable is less, at that time they will refund. But for that you have to wait for one year, right? So essentially the capital is blocked. So whatever you are planning to invest, the whole amount you will not be able to invest at the time that you want, right? Now what are the ways to avoid it? For this you have to watch this video till the end. The second is NSC IFSC. The wholly owned subsidiary of NSC itself is called NSC IFSC. Here you can take exposure to 8 global stocks including FANG companies. They are Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google and Walmart, Tesla, Microsoft. The number will increase in the future. This is not possible with your ordinary DMAT account. You have to set up a separate special DMAT account with the brokerage firm which is affiliated or licensed with this NSC IFSC. The trading hours of this platform is matched with New York Stock Exchange. There are two interesting points here. One is when you are buying stock, you are not going to get the share certificate but you will be issued something called deposit receipt. That means the HDFC banking unit which is affiliated with this NSCIFSC is going to buy the shares on behalf of you and hold it. Then as an evidence of ownership you are issued TR or depository receipt. So that itself is a proof that you are holding these shares. So by doing this the risk involved with the broker is completely eliminated here. When you are buying through a broker any foreign equity, the broker risk is still persisting there. So in this route, if you go, you are eliminating that risk. Second is, if you don't have thousands and thousands of dollars in your account in order to buy US stocks, you don't have to worry. This allows you to have fractional ownership of US shares. This table shows how many depository receipts will be issued to you when you are trying to buy each one of those eight stocks which are listed in this platform. Third route is ETF or exchange traded fund. This is the best possible route if you are not very good at analyzing the risk involved with direct equity investment. As I told earlier, unless and until you are very sure of analyzing the sector, economy risk, exchange rate fluctuations, it's always better to manage your risk by choosing this route. For example, if you are taking Invesco ETF which is tracking NASDAQ 100, that means you started building your position in international stocks in the safest possible way, right? And remember, just like shares, this is possible for an investor to buy and sell at any time during the trading hours. There are no restrictions and unlike mutual fund, the expense ratio is very low here. The last route available is mutual fund. You can either choose direct fund, otherwise fund of fund means a domestic fund which is investing in this international funds. In this fund of fund, the major problem is expense ratio will be very high because they have to cover the expense of two funds here, right? So always remember to check the expense ratio before selecting your mutual fund. Mutual fund most of the time is preferred because in order to align with your goal and you always tend to you know manage your risk well by trusting the professional management that is the only one reason most of the people prefer to take exposure because you are paying this fees for getting the professional expertise of a fund manager right but as i told earlier always remember what is the return that they have given as well as the expense ratio is bare minimum that you have to keep in mind while selecting your mutual fund but there is one more thing here as I have mentioned in the beginning of this video, the TCS tax collected at source at 20% which is usually applicable when you are making directly investment in equity is not applicable in mutual fund route. That is the major advantage. Now if you want some professional expertise, if you are getting something at reasonable expense ratio and you want to avoid this TCS tax collected at source at this high rate of 20% then mutual fund should be considered. 
the last point here in mutual fund is there is overall industry level cap which is prescribed by sebi sebi always try to put investors of india first and protect their interest from the potential risk which is involved in this overseas investment so in 2022 they said that the maximum exposure is 7 billion dollars and for each fund house for etf it is 1 billion dollars so within that you can invest the moment when it is exceeding they will try to stop all the outflows which goes from india to foreign equity the last but not the least is when you are investing in foreign equity you can't escape from the capital gain tax and the taxation on dividend for all resident indians whether it is short term or long term capital gain that depends on your holding period but you cannot escape this that's all for now and if you like this video please don't forget to share it with someone who needs it